The Red Raiders look to elevate their bowl eligibility chances by heading up to Lawrence and getting a top 25 victory over the number 21 Kansas Jayhawks. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, I know we're asking you to do a lot here. You might as well hit that notification bell as well to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long, whether that's breaking news rumors, recruiting updates, film breakdowns, and much more. We have you covered all year long right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, before we get into today's preview of Texas Tech heading up to Lawrence and facing the number 21 Kansas Jayhawks, I need to know your prediction. Before you hear my whole spiel about a stat of the game or key matchup or whatever it may be, Tell me your score prediction down on the pinned comment below. All right, let's set the scene a little bit as Texas Tech will indeed head up to Kansas and play at David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 11 a.m. on FS1. And by the way, the announcer for this game, I believe, is the one that goes viral all the time for his loud um, and rambunctious calls. I think if you went back and watched the UCF game against Baylor, where their quarterback ran into the end zone, it's going to be the same guy. I believe he's also the Charlotte Hornets play-by-play guy. Just an interesting fact there. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. What does matter is the history between Texas Tech and Kansas, and they have played 25 times. This will be the 25th meeting, I should say. Texas Tech is 22-2 and all-time against the Jayhawks, and they are 11-1 and all-time in Lawrence, the one lost being the Douglas Coleman game, the infamous one, back in 2019. Now, other things you need to know going into this one is this. Texas Tech had a lot of success against TCU running trips. Doesn't matter if it was on the left or the right. And then you see Zach Kittley motion somebody else over, whether that was Miles Price, Xavier White, whoever it may be. So that's something to watch for with Baron Morton back as QB1 again for the Red Raiders, right? Then. Taj Brooks, he is 80 yards away from having the 10th best all-time rushing season in Texas Tech program history. He's already top 10 in rushing yards for a career for Texas Tech. He actually got that last week against TCU um, in the third quarter. But now he's 80 yards away from passing DeAndre Washington for the 10th best single season rushing, you know, total, I guess you should say. Um for the Red Raiders, which I thought was pretty cool. And he's going to have a chance to do it as we'll talk about this Kansas defense here in just a second. Before we do that, though, let's talk about the injury front for the Red Raiders, both Cole Spencer and Mason Thart. Cole Spencer, the left guard, Mason Thart, the tight end, are still a week away from being active, according to Joey McGuire. He said Mason Tharp is going through some progressions and has a solid chance to play next week in the home finale against UCF, as does Cole Spencer. Now, the players to watch, as I mentioned, we were going to talk about This Kansas defense, and rightfully so, they have not been good the past five games for the Jayhawks. So this is why Taj Brooks and Cameron Valdez are players to watch for the Red Raiders against the Jayhawks. We obviously know Taj Brooks is, right? But the Jayhawks in their last five Big 12 games have allowed 220 yards on average rushing. Taj will obviously be a major part of the offense for Texas Tech, but I think Cameron Valdez will too in the sense of you're going to have the chance to really run up the running yards, no pun intended, I guess there, right, for Texas Tech. Because, again, the Jayhawks are averaging giving up 220 rushing yards per game over their last five Big 12 games, and they're averaging giving up 5.21 yards per carry to rushers. What better guy to have than Taz Brooks? And then you got the lightning aspect in Cameron Valdez. I think this is going to be pivotal for Texas Tech from the sheer fact of, hey, You're going to be able to keep the ball out of Jason Beam or Jalen Daniels, whoever is starting for the Jayhawks, and keep your offense on the field and keep that defense for the Red Raiders a little bit more, I guess, spry, you'd say, a little bit more energetic in terms of, hey, they're not on the field as much. I think this could be a way to do it if you're Texas Tech. Another player to watch for the Red Raiders is on that defense, and it's C.J. Baskerville. He switched positions last week from the star. Him and Tyler Owens flip. Tyler Owens is now at the star position. And then they switched C.J. Baskerville to the boundary safety. And what did he do? 
Well, he led the Red Raiders in tackles against TCU. And Joey McGuire mentioned him in his pregame presser, you know, pre-week presser, I guess is probably what we should say here, for the Kansas game, saying that C.J. Baskerville was the most sound tackler for the Red Raiders against TCU. He's going to be one to watch because he's going to be the guy that is really going to navigate that Texas Tech secondary and really keep them in a position where everything is in front of them, which is vitally important against this Jayhawks offense. Elsewhere on the defense, the Texas Tech linebacker group. I thought they arguably had their best game of the season against TCU, and it helps when you get a guy like Jacob Rodriguez back, right? But you got an impressive group of four right now in that rotation if you're Texas Tech, starting with Jacob Rodriguez, Josiah Pierre, and then you've obviously got Ben Roberts and Bryce Ramirez. These guys are going to be vitally important in stopping Devin Neal, a guy that we're going to talk about here in just a second for the Kansas Jayhawks, right? in the sense of you got to keep him between the tackles. And if you do that and don't allow him to get to the outside, your chances of winning up in Lawrence increase drastically if you're Texas Tech. Now the players to watch for Kansas, I put Jalen Daniels and Jason Beam just for the sheer fact of we don't know who's going to start at quarterback right now for Kansas. If I had to guess, I would say Beam. And for those that don't know, he's a UNT transfer and really wasn't all that great um, up in Lawrence. Until this season, and 7-2 and two will do that for you, as Jalen Daniels has missed quite a bit of time due to a back injury that's been lingering for him, right? But either way, both of those guys are running quarterbacks. They're both athletic. Beam is a former track star as well. You got to set the edge if you're Texas Tech and keeping those guys contained and allowing your linebackers and really those interior defensive linemen to have a chance at really creating some havoc for the quarterbacks of the Jayhawks, right? Speaking of the interior of the defensive line, Devin Neal, right, the running back for Kansas, if you can keep him between the tackles in the area of Tony Bradford, Jalen Hutchins, Quincy Ledeck, you know, Dylan Spencer, Miles Cole, Steve Linton should be back for this one, according to Joey McGuire, right? You are going to have a much better chance because when Devin Neal gets to the outside and he hits that one cut, he can break a tackle and he's got the speed to outrun basically anybody in the Texas Tech secondary. So that's going to be critical for the Red Raiders as well. Now, when it comes to the Kansas defense and what you can expect Baron Morton to have to see, right? The two guys you need to know are Kenny Logan Jr. and Mello Dotson. Logan leads the Jayhawks in tackles, while Dotson leads the team in pass deflections and INTs. Now, Barron will need to know where these guys are at all times. They're moving around quite a bit for that Jayhawks defense, but it's going to be interesting to see how much Baron Morton is actually going to have to do test-wise in this, in the sense that, again, remember what I said earlier about what Kansas is giving up on the ground. 220 yards on average the past five Big 12 games. You're really going to be able to run the football if you're Texas Tech, at least in theory, if history has told us anything, right? How many big plays does that open up for Baron Morton as that Jayhawk secondary gets inching closer and closer to the line of scrimmage to help in the run game? Can they have a big play or two like Dre McCray did against TCU? All right, my must-watch matchup is just that. It's the Texas Tech run game against the Kansas defense, right? I've mentioned it numerous times. This is the biggest factor for me because really what it comes down to is this. If you can control the line of scrimmage, if you're the Texas Tech offensive line in the run game and get Taj and Cameron Valdez and other guys, Nehemiah Martinez, maybe out of the backfield going for Texas Tech, you're going to be able to control the clock, keep your defense more fresh and allow them to really impact the game in a bigger way. And listen, this Texas Tech defense has actually been pretty damn good. Right, They really only gave up 21 points last week to TCU. They were put in an awful position Right when they went for fourth down, didn't convert, TCU scored a tutty. But they'll have to get better with the Texas Tech defense on third down from what they did last week against TCU where they allowed TCU to convert on 10 of 18 chances. How do you do that? You get them off the field and not have to play as much. Right, And you can do that by having the Texas Tech run game really dictate the pace of this game, I think this is going to be a huge Taj Brooks game, right? I think it's going to be just absolutely pivotal to get him involved. And it would not surprise me at all if we talk about Cameron Valdez getting in the neighborhood of anywhere from 9 to 12 touches in this game as well. I really think Texas Tech is going to dictate things with the run game because why not? You got arguably the best running back in the Big 12 to do so. All right. 
The odds for this one is Texas Tech plays number 21, Kansas. The spread as of right now is Kansas minus three and a half with the total over under set at 61 and a half. My prediction for this one, I've got Kansas winning 34-31. And the reason being is this. Yes, the Jayhawks are struggling on, well, stopping the run, I should say. But at home, they're not struggling at all. They're 5-0 and this year at David Booth Memorial Stadium up there in Lawrence. They have a chance to still get to the Big 12 title game. Texas Tech plays them close. But I think in the end, the Fighting Lance Leopolds end up winning this one in Kansas. All right, one more time. Let me hear it. Who you got winning this one? Leave your score prediction for Texas Tech at number 21, Kansas, on the pinned comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe, and while you're at it, you might as well turn on the notification bell as well to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long with the latest breaking news, rumors, film breakdowns, game previews, and everything in between. We've got you covered right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.